When you think of the tracks that would make up the playlist of your life, I am sure that you have songs in there that can transport you back to various times and places in your lives. Maybe there are songs that take you to a very specific memory of a great time with your parents or with your family. Perhaps there's a song in there from the very first live band concert that you went to see. Maybe you think of the song that was played for your first dance at your wedding. Songs like these are the songs that feel like a warm blanket around us. They are like comfort food. They just land well in your belly and go into your soul. They take you away from the place or the situation that you are in and is all around you and instead take you to a place of comfort. As I sat to write this sermon, well, I started to think of the comfort songs from my own playlist. Fleetwood Mac's Rumours album always transports me to the back seat of our old Ford Escort. It would be playing loud as my younger sister and I were being driven to the local swimming pool by our older sister. Happy times in a happy childhood. Anything by Roy Orbison puts me straight back into the car again, only this time it's with my dad, when we would be delivering newspapers in our community from his store in the evening. John Denver is my mum's favourite, and Sunshine on My Shoulders is still one of my favourite songs to play and sing to this day. When we met, Margaret introduced me to the little-known Northern Irish artist Brian Houston and, and his uh, album 35 Summers. When Eva was born, I would play and sing Paul Simon's father-daughter song at the top of my lungs. The American band Fun released a song called We Are Young and that brings me a memory of Eva and Jackson and their friends Kate and Ali singing it at the tops of their lungs when we would visit them each summer. Again, happy times, places of comfort. Every single one of these songs and albums takes me to a place of comforting memory. Now, out of interest, I wonder what our, some of these songs might be for you. Within our church staff team this week, we have created a, a Songs of Comfort playlist that you can listen to if you are interested. And if you are into the idea, you can add your own songs to it. You can get more information on that on our website that should be on the screen right about now. In the same way that I think of music that brings comfort, I know that there are also passages of Scripture that bring comfort too. I'm sure if we spent a few minutes now going back and forth, we would all have some words or phrases or passages of Scripture that have those special means of touching our souls and of bringing comfort to our spirits. Every Christmas, I read those words in one service at least. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. That's John chapter 1 verse 1. It comes home to me every single time I read it. Maybe you're more of a, an Old Testament person. You think of Jeremiah for a comfort verse. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Another Old Testament prophet with many of these words is Isaiah. Chapter 40, verse 31 says, Those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. I've still to experience running and not being weary. Or how about the New Testament? Some of Paul's words to the Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests before God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Maybe you want to type in some of your own comfort verses now into the community feed and share them with one another. 
I mean, I could stand here all day and I could recite familiar passages like that. There are just so many of them in the Bible. The scriptures are filled with words that bring comfort to our souls. But perhaps the most well known of them all is the psalm that we have read today, Psalm 23. Out of all 150 psalms in God's ultimate playlist, the 23rd psalm is the one that has been set to song the most times. It's probably the most popular, and it is the most likely to have been memorized at some point. We hear it read at memorial services. We sing it in our own worship services. We purchase fancy wall hangings with the words of the 23rd Psalm artistically represented, and we hang them in a place that we will see them, notice them, whisper them to ourselves, and experience the comfort that they bring. My friends, we know this psalm so well that it does indeed bring comfort to our souls to say the familiar words. In fact, let's try that now. Let's make it a breath prayer and we will sing it together. Right wherever you are in the world, as you inhale, say, The Lord is my shepherd, and as you exhale, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We know it well and we know the words, but I wonder sometimes, is there a chance that we know these familiar words so very well that we forget what they actually say to us and to the world around us? In this song, the psalmist gives us three images that are helpful for us in any time and place. In verses 1 and 2, we have the overarching and enduring image of the psalm, that is, of the Lord as shepherd. Now, there are many things that we could say about shepherds right here and now, but ultimately the work of the shepherd is a work of great care for the flock. This care is expressed through things such as the provision of food, or of shelter, or of protection from dangers that exist all around When a shepherd rises in the morning, he is thinking about the care of the flock. When we take these words, these ancient words, and when we make them our own, we are saying quite simply that the Lord God is our shepherd. We are stating that we recognize that all of the work of God is the work of care and provision and protection in our lives. Verse 4 gives us the second image in the 23rd Psalm, and it's the image of the God who is present with us in all things. All things. The shepherd is not only there when the times are good and when everything is simple and easy and to be celebrated. Rather, this shepherd is always with us. When we are on the mountaintops of life and when we walk through the darkest valleys. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, the psalmist says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, it's said that on his deathbed, John Wesley's final words were, and best of all, God is with us. Wesley understood that the God who is present with us and who is recognized by us as being present is the God who can bring comfort, peace, and deep assurance even in the face of death itself. I mean, that's what we say in this Easter season of resurrection, right? In Psalm 23, we are receiving the images of God as a shepherd, of God who is present, and finally, this image of God as a gracious host. In the final two verses of the song, this is the image that is created for us. When he says those words, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows, and surely I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I wonder in your memory and in your mind, can you think of the person that you love to be hosted by? You know, 
the one whose house you go to and you know that it will just feel like home. The weather, or the welcome will be warm and you will be welcomed just as you are. You will be fed well. You will be cared for well in that place. For Margaret and myself, it is two of our oldest friends, Philip and Joanna. They live in Northern Ireland, so we don't get to see them nearly enough. But when we do, they are always the perfect hosts. All of the food is home cooked from scratch. It is always delicious. There's always good coffee and chocolate to follow. And then while our bellies literally ache, the chat and the fellowship is always just right. They take us just as we are. They welcome us with great love and with a warm hug every single time. And we can't wait to see them this summer. It is a similar image of God that the psalmist is giving us here. That of a God who is a gracious, warm and welcoming host, who takes us just as we are, who feeds us, fills us, and who listens to us. These images of God in the 23rd Psalm come together to remind those of us who read and receive these words for ourselves that who and what we find in the God who created us is all that we need. All of the care that we need, all of the protection and provision that we need, all of the company we need, all of the gracious and warm welcome that we need. And that's why this song is a song of great comfort. But here's the thing. It's not just for you and me. I mean, yes, this is a personal psalm. It is written for moments of personal devotion. That much is true. But as followers of Jesus Christ, as readers of the gospel, I don't know about you, but I can't help but notice the hat tips that the various gospel writers make to this particular set of ancient words. For example, Jesus is described as the good shepherd by the gospel writer John. The good shepherd who knows his sheep, protects his sheep, cares for and provides for his sheep, who lays down his life for his sheep. Matthew refers to Jesus as Emmanuel, God who is with us. And at the end of Matthew's gospel, as Jesus commissions his disciples to go into all of the world, preaching and baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, he tells them that surely he will be with them to the end of the age. Jesus is the present saviour with us, always sustaining us, leading us and guiding us. And then the Gospels also show us Jesus, the gracious host, who sets the table, gathers with his friends, even those who would betray him, and breaks bread with them. Jesus, the gracious host, who eats with sinners all the way through the Gospels. Suddenly, when we read this psalm and we find Jesus in it, we understand that this very personal psalm of comfort is not only for us. And these images are not only for us. Rather, this psalm is for the whole world. And so the 23rd psalm has profoundly radical implications for you and me. It tells us that God is with us, but God is not ours to own. It tells us that God is our shepherd but he is also giving life and care to the world around us. The psalm tells us that God is our gracious host, but he has set a table to which the whole world is invited. So my friends, we read and we receive this familiar psalm as a song of great comfort for ourselves, a song that lands just right in our souls. But we also read this psalm as a song of comfort for the world around us. So my question to you today is this, how will you hear this psalm today? Will it be over familiar? So well known that you miss the richness of the images of God contained in it? Will you hear it just for yourself? 
Or will you hear of the God who cares for you and the world? The God who is with you and is giving life to the world. The God who hosts you graciously and welcomes you warmly and makes room for all other people to sit at his table with you. These ancient words, so familiar. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How will you read them? How will you receive them? And how will you share them with the world around you today? My friends, I don't know if that was a word that you needed to hear today, that God welcomes you graciously to the table that he has set, that God graciously hosts you, that God cares for you and is present with you like a shepherd who wakes up thinking about what's best for you every day. This is the God that we worship. And if you had forgotten that today, well then I hope that the ancient words of the 23rd Psalm will remind you of those truths and that you will open up your heart today to the God who loves you, the God who is with you, the God who cares for and protects you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of all of our sermons online, we throw up a couple of questions for you to sit with as you reflect on what I've just said in the sermon, as you reflect on the words of this 23rd Psalm, or maybe the songs that we've played today, or a prayer that has been prayed. At the end of our service, it does us well to sit quietly for a moment and just reflect on what we've done and how it's going to transform and change and carry us into the week ahead. Here are today's questions. 